Hi, welcome to Kerry's Cards. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make a box for one of these lovely bottles of sparkling alcohol that I found in the local supermarkets near us um, this week. And I gave a couple of to my friends whose birthdays are this week and it seemed to go down quite well. So I thought I would record how I made it um, so that if you wanted to have a go, you're more than welcome to. So by using a few pieces of card and um, design series paper, um, we're going to end up with a beautiful little box to store one of these um, lovely little bottles of bubbly. That's a good way of celebrating any event. Uh, today I'm going to use, I'm going to focus on the white bottle rather than the pink one, um, just because I want to, I, I haven't tried the white one yet. I've drank some of the pink and that was quite tasty. So this one might be mine for this evening. Um, we're going to use some Hydrangea Haven papers from the designer series in the current spring um, new cat mini catalogue for stamping up. Um, I'm going to concentrate using on this top piece of card here that's got some gorgeous grape, um, Highland Heather, we're using Misty Moonlight Blue, the white matches the background of the bottle. Um, so yeah, let's get started. You will need some strong scissors, uh, some glue, your bone folder to make sure that your um, score lines are nice and sharp. And I think that's it. So let's get cracking. So I'll put this all to one side. I'll say that was going on the floor. Very important there. So the first thing we're going to do is, I'll just keep that there because it's very pretty. I'm going to pop on the side the instructions and the measurements for the boxes for the base layers to start with. We're going to build up. There's quite a lot of cutting involved in this, so you will need quite a good trimmer. Um, I'm using my Stampin' Up! one that ex the arm extends out for different measurements. So the first thing we're going to do, my base layer of my box is going to be um, Misty Moonlight. We need three pieces of card, A4 card in total to make the base, two of which you're going to cut exactly the same. The third one has different dimensions, different um, bits, one for the top of the box and one for the inside of the box. So the first things first, we don't need to cut the width of the card because it's eight and a quarter already, but we do need to cut it so that it's nine inches. We are then going to score at three inches. And six inches. We're then going to rotate 90 degrees, score again at three inches. And then the little thing that we need to do then for each of these is just mark it at five and a half inches. And by marking, I'm going to use my scorer up and down, just lightly pressing the edges. And I'm not sure if you can see that on the camera there, but it just tells you where the edges are for each of those. Can you see that one as well? And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut from that point up to that point using our scoreboard, our, tr our trimmer line them up on the, where the blade is and just cut those corners off for each one of these. And then we're going to repeat that for the next piece of card. So we want nine inches. And we're going to score at three inches. six inches, rotate 90 degrees and score again at three inches. Do exactly the same, find our five and a half point on our scoreboard, on our marker, get our little plate there to give us a little mark and then line up our score lines, cut the corners off. on one side actually we'll bring it back and I'll just carry on with the cutting what we need to do then is we're going to cut up the score lines up to the first three inch score line and these bits we're cutting here I'm just doing a thin slither from both so basically just cutting where the score line is cutting the score line out okay that's one 
we'll do the other one. And these areas here are going to make the top and the bottom of our boxes. Our, our wine bottle holder. Put this one aside. Get rid of these. Just leave those out of the way. Then we're going to look at making our top of the box and the inside of the box. So using our third piece of Misty Moonlight card, we need to cut it at four inches. So I'm going to cut this one at four inches. Just pop that to one side. And we'll look at this one first and this needs to be six inches long. So this is our four by six. Now on the four inch side, so back to this side, we're gonna score at half an inch. So I'm going to this side to get the half an inch here. I'm gonna use my scorer. And then I need to score at three and a half inches. I'll turn it around. Sorry, let's go back to that one. So that's half an inch. So if half an inch is there see and then three and a half inches here so what we're doing here is we're just creating the tabs that we're going to need on either side then on the six inch side again we need to score at half an inch so that's my half an inch done there the reason i do this side is i've got more area here to buff it against so it's a straight make sure it's a straight line and then we need to score at three inches So this is this one. Now I'm going to just mark in black pen the areas that we're going to cut out. So we need to, when we cut it, we're going to cut this bit out, this bit off. I'm going to make this into a tab and this one into a tab. So we're going to cut that bit, all of that bit, that bit and all of that bit. So I'll do that now. You won't need to um, put the black marks on. I've just done that so it's easier for you to see because sometimes the score lines you can't actually see very well on the films. Cut an angle there. So that's one. We won't see these bits when we put them in because they're going to be glued. So that is the top of the box done. If we take back our other piece of card left off the A, piece we want another four inch slice and on this one we want it to be ten and a quarter inches long rotate it around ten and a quarter okay so that's our ten and a quarter inch so on our longest side so the ten inch side ten and a quarter inch side we need to score at three inches five and a half inches and nine and three quarter inches. And then gonna rotate it around 90 degrees and use our sides to make our edges this side. So quarter, half an inch that side, turn it around and half an inch again on this side. Okay, I'm just gonna pop this to one side that Timmer with the next level and again mark off what we're going to cut off in terms of our boxes so this area here is going to come off this area here we're going to make into a tab then this area here we're going to have to make these bits into really long tab areas to cut off and when we come to building it you'll see why to do with the angle that we put this piece of card into the middle and then we're going to take all of that area off there so if you can see that if you're struggling let's move it up just slightly for you um just pause it so you can have a quick look at what you need to cut out i'm going to carry on now and cut out the areas that we're not going to keep
And when you are actually doing this, you might want to do it in pencil if you do need to cut out to make your tabs, just so that you can see what you're cutting out. That then makes our, this is going to be the center part where our bottle is stored. Now, the, bringing back the bottle now, it sits in this part of your piece of card. So you need to make sure that there's a hole here, a circle. I have, I'd like an oval, but I don't actually have an oval that'll fit. But I do have one of the stitched um, dies from the Stitch Set Shapes die set that means that goes over my bottle. So that way I know that my bottle will fit into the box when I finish, because there's no point in doing all this and then not being able to get your alcohol bottle in. So I'm just gonna go off camera a minute while I run this through the embossing machine, uh, cut and emboss. So there we have our circle that I've taken out. I'm going to keep that to one side because I can use that as my tag later on my box. So these are the base elements for the card that we have so far for the box that we're going to do. I'm going to put those to one side before we start folding all of those because I want to get all my papers cut ready um, before we go on to the next stitch, stage. So I'm going to move on now to the layers that you need for the, well, if I carry on and put those up there, so you can see them if you need them for the main box. We're gonna then work on this layer now, which is the base layer that's gonna sit on top of this one before you put your designer series paper in. And this is where we're gonna use the old olive. Um, we need to have, for the top of the card, the box, is a piece of card that is two and three quarters by two and three quarters. So I'm gonna cut all the way down. And this is gonna be my two and three quarters. And pop that there, so that's my first layer. I then need to move on to the front and the back of the box, and these are both um, square, uh, rectangle shapes. So I want one that is the same as two and three quarters, which this is. I need to cut that one at five, seven and a quarter inches. And then the seven and a quarter inch, we're going to cut at five inches. So that's the top and the bottom for one card. One side of the box or front. Let's cut again at two and three quarters. And we'll do exactly the same as we did then, which is seven and a quarter. And I'm going to cut this at five inches. So I have two lots of that up there. We then move on to our sides. These are slightly more tricky because of the angle that's in the box when you lift the lid up. So Again, this is two and three quarters, which should be the last strip of your A4 piece of card. And we need this to be cut at seven and three quarter, seven and a quarter again. It's almost the same as what we did at the top. But in this one, we're going to actually cut it at an angle. So we need to make a mark at two and a quarter. Now I'm just going to get my pen. I'm going to do it quite dark on this one so you can see what I'm, where I'm cutting. Two and a quarter there. Turn it round 180 degrees and do two and a quarter again there. And then you're going to line it up on your cutter and cut it like that and keep that to one side. We then need to get our second piece of A4 card, cut that at two and three quarters wide. Turn it round at seven and a quarter. Again, mark at two and a quarter. 
turn it around 180 degrees, mark at two and a quarter. And then, again, remember to use pencil if you were doing this because then you can rub it out. And that's our other side of the box now, done. So they are all the layers that you need for the outside of the box. We're then going to move on to our designer series paper. I'll just move that there so you can still see. And that one there so you can still see. So our designer series paper we picked um, was this one from the Hydrangea Haven. I could actually do that side, but I'm not. I'm going to stick with my guns and go with the flowery side. So same as before, except now we've gone down quarter of an inch. So all of our strips need to be two and a half inches in thickness, in width. So we'll cut at two and a half. We'll just do one at a time. And we need this to be two and a half. And then you'll see if we get our top piece back, then this is going to be the top part of the box. That's that one there. We then will work on our normal rectangle shapes, which need to be six and three quarters. And we're going to cut at two inches. And line them up so we know we've got all our pieces of card and paper at the right time. So that's that one. We'll do another strip of two and a half inches. Move on to our second set that we need. So this is our six and three quarters. And we're going to cut it two inches. And that's that one. And then that's that one. Now we come to our triangle bits. Now these bits, you do need to take some time and just double cent and sense check yourself when we're cutting our DSP because they're at a funny angle. Um, so hopefully what I've given you the measurements will work out right. So again, we need our two and a half inch strip widths. This time we're cutting at slightly smaller. We need two lots of six and a half inches. So six and a half inches on here is there. Let's just pop that one there. So this is the first one and we need to mark at two inches on this side here. And then turn around 180 degrees and mark at two inches here. Now if my maths is done right, We then cut through the two angles there and that should be perfect size for one there. And then that should be perfect for the other size, that side. That's that one. Okay. Now, when it comes to this one, it's slightly different because we need to turn our box DSP round the opposite direction. So we are actually going to put the designer series paper on the other side of this. So we're going to tip them over that way. So now we've got our cuts going the opposite direction. So again, we're going to need another strip of two and a half by six and a half. But this time, at this point, then we need to measure at four and a half inches, which is here. Turn around and four and a half inches on this side. Just check that I've got that right. Yep. And then I'm going to marry the two lines up. The bottom one here because I went slightly wrong. And cut and fingers crossed. That is then your other side of your box. Okay, let's pop these all to one side. 
So this is where we start being able to put everything together. So we stick all of our designer series papers onto our box, onto the base card layer, sorry. Again, using my Tombow glue. You can use whichever glue you prefer. I just like Tombow because it's quick. But keep your pieces together so you know which piece belongs to which part of the box when we build it together. So your patterns flow then, you see. This is when everything starts to take shape. And keep all your bits in the right order. Especially the, the ones cut at an angle. Okay, that one and that one. Oh, almost done for this level, this layer. top one okay so that's that layer done there so that's that all done now this is where we bring back our base card so we need to make sure that we use our bone folder or whatever it is you have to burnish all the edges because these are going to be what we um, what make the box move. So we just need to make sure we burnish everything. Okay, so that's that one. So on our top of our box, we are going to use one of these layers to fit in there. I'm running out of glue. Okay, so that's one. Just pop that to one side. And then gonna get each of our let's just put the lid on the lid again, each of our sides of our box, top and the bottom. Make sure you burnish each of the edges again because it helps give it a really nice solid um sharp lines that one same again with this one okay so from here we're gonna then build our box layers up so we need our glue this is the easy part because these bits are really obvious which goes where the two rectangles Okay, then we just make sure we've got all the bits that we need for the other sides of the card, the box. Okay. And then build them up. Oh, slightly out the top there.
just to one side and then this one let's finish our inside burnish the edges again on itself Ooh, okay this is going to be the front of the box that we see here put that on the wrong side but normally you'd stick that side rather than what I've just done I'm starting to get excited because it's coming together at last um, okay, then we take the insides of our box or our base layer and I'm going to put glue on all of these two here. Oop. And then I'm going to fold one in on that one so to create a neat box on the edge. So it's slidey a bit, make sure it's nice and tight. Fold that one in. I've done that so that you've got a nice edge there. So that's one of them. And do exactly the same with this one. Put that one down and in and on top of itself. Let's do the same again with this one. Then we take one of the boxes. They're both the same at the moment. So one's going to be the bottom and one's going to be the top. So we're building. So that's how we've built our box there at the moment. But we need to put our back on the back of this box, which is where this one comes in. So this is the top. So we can go in either one, but I'm going to pop it in there. If you pop it in that way and just press it down nice and tightly, that is going to call, create your back of your card box. And then we'll glue this bit. This is where you need plenty of glue and it starts to get a little bit fid fiddlier now because you need to bend it in and you will need to hold it in place while the glue moves. But at least with the Tombow, you have the option to, it slides about a bit until you get it into the place that you want it. Wipe off any gluey bits. But you will need to just hold it a little bit until it sets. Not long. But just a little bit and keep pushing it down into the base. You could use double-sided sticky tape for this, but I think the Tombow, because it's soft or it's liquid, you just have that little bit more flexibility with it. So that's one part of the box. The next part we need to do now is join these two together. And we use that by doing this. So we're actually going to pop some glue on this bit here. And then we're going to bend it over until you join your two boxes together like that and then hold it in place. This is creating your lever on your box. Make it a bit tighter if you need to by just squeezing it. Yeah, you need to make sure you are holding it nice and tight otherwise it pops off like that. And if you line it up and then fold it over. And just hold it for a little while. If you wanted to, you could pop some pegs on there while it dries. Just hold it in place. But that is the top of the box. That's your lid tipping upside. If you wanted to know that that's now the top, you could put your top layer on. That's the top. 
top of your box. Okay, now comes the quite fiddly bit. I'm getting this last bit in, but it's the, the best bit really. Big bit of glue on the base. As we did with the top, just slide it into the base of the bottom box and hold it in place for a little bit until the glue sets. You can see that. Then take your glue, and this is a, just a bit, a bit at a time now. A little bit at a time. Bend it in, glue it in. Again, any excess glue you can just wipe off. If you want to bend that right back so you've got more space for your hands to get inside. And almost done. And we just put some glue on the sides here. that one there. It's starting to be a little bit sticky but that's fine. It's a sign of a good crafting session. And then you just need to bend them in, bend that one down and then hold it in place until the glue sets. You don't have to glue these bits. But I find it helps strengthen the box a little bit, gives it makes it a little bit more rigid for you. So there is your gift box bottle holder and hopefully if all the measurements are correct you should then be able to just pop in your box your bottle of alcohol so i'll put all these instructions in the youtube video so you've got the measurements and everything i would normally finish that off with some ribbon you could use the tag that we had, remember that we've taken out of the center of the box. Don't throw it away, you can use that for your gift tag on the top. I've got some gorgeous um, ribbon that I haven't used yet. Let's see if I can open that. Let's get into it. This is the hardest part. Matching ribbon, so if you wanted to, it doesn't need much really. You can just pop some ribbon underneath and tie that on the top. And you have a beautiful, quick, well, I say quick, beautiful way of presenting a bottle of alcohol for a friend. There you are. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Any questions or queries or anything like that, then please note in the comments. If you like it, subscribe, share, um, come along to my blog or also have a look at what I'm doing on Instagram. Many thanks. Take care. Bye bye.